The Sufi is the provincial treasure of the ANC in Gauteng, Kumbit Mpo, Tau. I said it on purpose. On the right hand side, <laughs> on the right hand side of the chair of the province is the regional secretary of Johannesburg, Kumbit Dada Morero. Next to Kumbit Dada Morero is the regional deputy chair, Kumbit Unis Mpina. And next to Kumbit Unis is the regional deputy secretary of the ANC here in Johannesburg, Comrade Loiso Masuku. And, and in my phone, you are still saved as Loiso Lukain. I don't know why. I'm not changing. <laughs> and then next to me is Comrade uh, MMC, Comrade Treasure of Johannesburg, Comrade Mpo Moerani, not Mpo Dan, Mpo Moerani. So, Chair, I hand over to you to take the colleague. And those who are locked in, please send your questions as a chance to read in the statement. Thank you so much, colleagues. Thank you very much, uh, spokesperson of the ANC in Gauteng province. I am going to take you through uh, what the provincial leadership of the ANC in Gauteng, together with our regional executive committee in Johannesburg would like to communicate. Uh, firstly, in 2019, the ANC worked with the coalition partners to establish what is called the government of local unity in the city of Johannesburg. And that government of local unity was led by the late executive mayor Makubo, who worked tirelessly to address a lot of problems that had existed in the city of Johannesburg under the administration led by the DA, particularly in the period between 2016 and 2019. Unfortunately, we lost the late Mayor Makubo to COVID-19 and the ANC moved on to deploy Jolly D. Matongo as the next executive mayor of the city, again working in partnership with the coalition partners uh, to re-establish a government of local unity in the city. The focus again was to accelerate service delivery programs identified by the city's leadership regarding fixing the problems of this city and taking the city back to the days when it was under the leadership of the ANC when the people of Johannesburg were very proud of their city. Again we lost Mayor Jolly Di Matongo to a horrific accident at the time we least expected. So we have gone through a very difficult period of losing two mayors within a space of 40 days. The people of our city have communicated their pain and conveyed condolences to both the ANC and to the families of the late mayors of our city. As the ANC, we want to appreciate the messages that were received from the people of Johannesburg in particular and South Africans across the board who felt and continue to feel the pain and the loss we have suffered in such a short space of time. It will indeed take time for the families, uh, the friends, and, and members of our organizations to f recuperate and recover from this loss. We want to make it clear that on the other side, there is an obligation 
that the, the people of the city must continue to receive service. They have huge problems, and these problems are reported every day. And some of these problems we will outline later. So even as we go through grief, we have to respond to the task of leadership. And the African National Congress in the city of Johannesburg is ready to ensure that there's continuity of governance, continuity of leadership, and continuity of service delivery, including addressing those issues, pressing issues affecting people of the city from the north to the south, from the east to the west of the city, and from the center of the city, the CBD of Johannesburg. So the ANC is confronted by the need to address, even in 30 days left, the need to address the issues facing people of Johannesburg. We had to consider a number of options, one of which, whether it was given 30 days left, whether it was necessary to establish an executive committee and have a political leadership in the, in the form of a mayor and mayoral committee and arrive, have arrived at the conclusion that all the challenges of unstable supply of electricity that affect many parts of the city of Johannesburg, intermittent water cuts, uh, problems of a city that continues to face challenges, cleanliness, even with the programs that have been put in, in place, addressing the problems of infrastructure, including roads, the problems of crime, ongoing agency with which these issues must be dealt with, to deal with poverty, inequality, and unemployment. All these problems, even in the next 30 days before local government, need to be dealt with by a political leadership that has got this sense of agency. And a lot of work has been done, including in dealing with matters, issues of housing, issues of public transport. A lot of these issues have been dealt with by the leadership of the city since 2019 under the government of local unity, the ANC and its coalition partners. That is precisely what we would like done. So for that reason, the ANC would have, under normal circumstances, allowed a much longer period to mourn the passing of our deceased mayor because we took a bit of a long time, longer time to mourn the passing of Mayor Makubo. We would have taken a bit of a longer time to mourn the passing of Mayor Matongo as we have done with the mayors who have passed on in the last few months, including Mayor Busimu Disakeng, the district mayor of Sidibeng, and we had earlier lost the mayor of Mukhali City, Mayor Patrick Dipudi. We took a bit of time to mourn their passing. Under the circumstances we face, we have come to the conclusion that the the political vacuum that exists in Johannesburg because there is no mayoral executive at the moment, there is no mayoral committee. Uh, it's as a function, once the mayor is no more, uh, the executive that uh, was elected with the mayor cannot be in place. As a result of that, the city is under the leadership of the speaker and the city manager. It is our view that we need a collective of the mayoral executive, otherwise known as the mayoral committee, to continue to respond to these many issues that the leadership of the city under Mayor Makubo and later under Mayor Matongo was dealing with. So we have come to the determination that the city of Johannesburg would need an a, a executive even in the next 30 days because the people of Johannesburg want their matters to be attended to 
especially matters of life of of life and death the urgent issues of electricity supply and water supply which uh, have been uh, receiving urgent attention by the political leadership but also issues of housing delivery as we have said the issues related to crime uh, but the implementation of a program to address some of the recent challenges we have heard and small businesses in the city of Johannesburg have experienced problems from COVID-19 as well as the recent unrest. So for that reason, it is for that reason that the ANC started a consultation process, firstly with the regional executive committee. That consultation process was started by the provincial leadership of the province and these are the, the, the people who are sitting here, the provincial officials or office bearers meeting with the, pro, the regional office bearers, they are all sitting here, started a consultation process. The result of that consultation process was a meeting of the regional executive committee, which came to the same conclusions. There is urgency for the city to have a political leadership in the form of a mayoral executive or mayoral committee uh, led by a mayor uh, in the intervening period between now and the 1st of November uh, so that this leadership can respond and address the issues facing the people in the city continuously. There can't be a vacuum, uh, whether there will be elections later or not, uh, there can't be a vacuum. Governance must uh, continue. Uh, and it is better that that happens when there is a political leadership uh, of the city. Uh, so that consultation process from the Regional Executive Committee led to another consultation process from the Regional Executive Committee. This leadership collective went to the Provincial Executive Committee. That ha happened uh, this week. Uh, and the Provincial Executive Committee applied its mind, came to the conclusion, same conclusions. It is important that there is an executive leadership in the city of Johannesburg to continue to provide uh, a service to communities and particularly pay attention to matters of life and death. We repeat, there are parts of the city where there's, there's no electricity supply, and there are people who are sick. We faced that when we went to Soweto. That's not just in Soweto. It is uh, in the northern areas of the city, it, in Ivory Park and uh, in Deep Slot. That's not only there in the different uh, parts of, uh, uh, of the city, but it is also in other parts of the province. Yesterday, uh, I was in uh, Merafong. I faced the same situation. And the other day we went to Mabopani, Winterfeld, it's the same situation. So these are matters of life, life and death. Earlier in the week, uh, there were water supply interruptions. So these issues require a political leadership that will deal with them with a great deal of urgency. So this political leadership must focus on, even in the next 30 days, Fast tracking the implementation of growth, the growth and development strategy of Johannesburg 2040. It's called the GDS 2040. That is the program that the ANC put forward in the city uh, in the earlier period, and it was brought back in 2019. The ANC led coalition government of local unity is implementing this program of growth the growth and development strategy the gds 2040 of the city of johannesburg the program focuses on improving the quality of life and building a development driven resilience for all residents of the city we know that in the last uh, five years in particular the city of johannesburg has regressed in many areas that is the truth uh, this is born by the facts. Uh, one of that comes out of the quality of life survey. Uh, the last five years, 
in the city of Johannesburg have been difficult. We know some of the issues are a result uh, of COVID-19. That's the, the general problem, but others are a result of uh, the governance issues facing the city. Uh, the city should continue to provide resilient, livable, sustainable urban environment, smart infrastructure, uh, because this city is committed to a low carbon economy. Uh, and there are several initiatives, including in the area of energy support, uh, a, a low carbon economy, creating a job in intensive, uh, uh, competitive, a inclusive and smart economy that has harnesses the potential of all residents of the city. Uh, that's what the ANC's program has been in this city of Johannesburg. It stalled for a while, uh, and I can speak with confidence, it stalled for a while pursuing this program at a provincial level uh, in the period between 2016 and 2019 was difficult. And that's the problem with coalition governments where things can stall, even the most important programs of national government, provincial government, and local government can stall if coalitions don't work uh, and long uh, to find one another. But we have established a government of local unity in the city that uh, a commitment of the ANC in Johannesburg has all always been about a high performing metro metropolitan government that is proactive that builds a sustainable inclusive uh, and locally integrated communities within the context of the Gauteng city region and it is absolutely important that local government articulates with uh, the provincial plan and the provincial plan articulates with local plans uh, as well as the national plan. And all, only when we pull in the same direction can we make our cities better, can we make our province better, and can we make our country better. So what has come out of this process of consultation? So I have spelled out the consultation process. Out of that consultation process from the region to the province, uh, and out, out of those processes, uh, and I will explain out of the provincial meeting what then happened at a national level, uh, the, both the regional executive committee and the provincial executive committee identified uh, Comrade Mpomo Erani as a mem who is currently a member member of the mayoral committee responsible for infrastructure, all the infrastructure issues, including the roads and the environment, the cleaning of the city. Those programs uh, uh, were, were falling under him, under both mayors, together with the mayoral executive committee. The leadership of the region sitting here, there are two members of the regional executive committee who are also members of the mayor, who were, who were up to that point members of the mayoral committee working together with uh, the coalition partners and, and, and other members of the mayor, mayoral committee who, who are ANC members. It has been identified by the REC and the PEC and then in accordance with the ANC processes on metropolitan municipalities, the national executive committee represented by the national officials have final say. So in a sense, we can express our wishes, uh, but it is only when the national officials of the ANC have made a final decision uh, that uh, we can say we have uh, somebody, when the council sits, we will put forward as a candidate for mayor of the ANC in the intervening period between now and the first uh, of November elections. So how, how, how was this arrived as, at? The name of Mpomo Erani was amongst the three names when the ANC was filling the vacancy for mayor. Uh, three names 
of candidates were interviewed by the national office bearers, the national officials of the ANC. Uh, when uh, Jolie D. Matong was appointed a candidate and subsequently the mayor of the city of Johannesburg. So Mpomo Erani was the second amongst those who were interviewed. There were three. He was the second. And even at that time, uh, the feedback we got from the national officials was that amongst the three were very competent people uh, and any one of them could be appointed mayor. But at that time, the preference was Jolly D. Matongo will take us far. Uh, and, and indeed, in the last few days of, uh, of being the mayor of Johannesburg, we saw the work done by Jolly D. Matongo. He was loved by the people of our city. So getting to this point, last night, the national officials met with the provincial officials at which a report was tabled and that report was of a meeting of the regional executive committee and the provincial executive committee so the national officials of the ANC had interviewed Mpomo Erani uh, so the proposal that he should be the next to be considered uh, to be the mayor of Johannesburg in the intervening period that proposal was ratified by the national officials of the ANC. And it is for that reason that we present to you today uh, not a, someone who still has to go through the ANC processes. So the ANC processes have been completed. Uh, there's been consultation with our, our coalition partners and the leadership of the region can talk more, more competently about that because they manage the coalition uh, uh, partners at a regional level, but there's been consultation with the coalition partners. Uh, the ANC is very confident that as we sit, uh, we know that there will be a council meeting tomorrow. The city of Johannesburg is convening a council meeting tomorrow uh, to elect a new mayor. Uh, and as we sit, we are comfortable that uh, uh, together with our coalition partners, we will be able to elect uh, Mpome Rani tomorrow as the new mayor of Johannesburg, uh, after which uh, he will announce a, a mayoral executive, otherwise known as a mayoral committee, uh, because they have to start that work immediately tomorrow. Uh, we have lost time. We have lo uh, the whole of last week, uh, and this week up to now, we have not been having a mayoral executive in the city. Uh, uh, they, they have to start uh, that work immediately after the council sitting tomorrow. And once the mayor announces the team, the team must hit the ground running. What is it that this team uh, should be paying attention to? And that's our sense of the critical issues facing the city. Uh, again, going back to the electricity supply interruptions affecting the different parts of the city, the city had already taken a decision, and this process has, has taken much longer. Over many years, Johannesburg has always wanted to supply the areas that are currently supplied by ESCOM, uh, and those areas include Soweto, Orange Farm, Ivory Park, and other areas uh, to get city power you we, you know the city has an a municipal entity called city power uh, the one that supplies essentially these uh, areas uh, the city is very alive to what that means there is an mou signed between uh, that mou is actually prepared it was not signed it was uh, about to be signed between the mayor uh, and the leadership of ESCOM on transferring these areas. We are not talking about a, a, a plan, a new thing. These discussions have taken place over time. An, an MOU was drafted. It was supposed to be signed this month of uh, uh, September by Mayor Jolly D. Matongo and the leadership of ESCOM. Uh, it is still a matter that the ANC believes this must receive uh, attention now. Uh, and it's a matter that uh, 
the ANC has interacted with the various communities uh, affected by this. Uh, and we, 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 we believe that uh, given what city power has been able to do in the areas where it supplies, uh, we, we, we will confidently tackle the problems uh, of uh, supply of electricity to communities which is not reliable. We know other issues on this have to do uh, with illegal connections, have to do with those who don't pay. But our own experience, and we went to the ground with the president two weeks ago, our own experience tells us that uh, there are also other problems that are, have nothing to do with payment. Uh, we got into houses where people showed us they've been paying uninterruptedly. But when, when uh, power is cut, they also get cut whether they pay or not. Uh, and and this, uh, this is one of the important issues that uh, the, the mayor and the mayoral executive in Johannesburg are going to, to, to get formal processes of the city of Johannesburg through city power taking over the supply of electricity. The second important and urgent issue is to continue to provide leadership on our response to COVID-19. Uh, the city under Mayor Makubo and Mayor Ma Matongo, the city has worked with the province very, very closely. Uh, Johannesburg uh, has been the key driver of, uh, of the vaccination campaign uh, uh, in the province. It has the largest number of vaccinations. Uh, Johannesburg has also been driving our COVID response, including on economic interventions and, and uh, social interventions with, a, with uh, what the city calls an expanded social package. It's something that the city has been implementing. The city will continue to implement that. Uh, that social in, expanded social package intervention provides some relief, including to rate payers, uh, including to targeted businesses. It's something the city has been rolling out already. It is urgent. Uh, it must be expanded to those pe people who lost their businesses during the unrest, not just the COVID only. But the city has also been rolling out housing uh, uh, delivery. Uh, we had a an intervening period between 2016 and 2019 where the city was not moving. I speak with authority as the premier of the province. We had lots of problems around the housing projects that were no longer moving because the city was governed differently and people had different ideas. Uh, and in some instances, we had to ro ro move ahead with those housing projects uh, in the north of the city, Riverside Development, in the south of the city, Savannah, Savannah City, which, in, which includes uh, three municipalities, uh, and in areas like Lufereng and some of those uh, developments, uh, the province had to just shoot ahead and implement them. But it's very difficult for a provincial government to implement housing delivery uh, without local government. You need local government. Uh, they sit with a big budget uh, that they get from national and provincial government uh, that is uh, directed towards bulk uh, infrastructure to unlock housing. Uh, and provincial government uh, brings resources for to the top structure. But you need aligned government. You need people who, un who agree, who understand uh, that uh, the, how human settlements are a priority in particular areas of our city. And development must take place not at the pace of the wish of the politicians uh, or a slow uh, bureaucracy. Development must take place uh, at the pace that people really who are desperate for housing uh, would, would like to see. So... So even in the next 30 days, the, the government of local unity will focus also on these housing projects that have been uh, put in, in place, uh, to particularly to increase uh, 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 the coverage to 30,000 30, families who are beneficiaries of various housing projects from the deep south of the city to the, to the north of the city. Uh, those housing we need these housing projects uh, to be delivered, uh, and most of them are ready. Uh, there were one or two things that uh, the bureaucracy of the city needs to sort out. Uh, and in the city of Johannesburg, a lot of 
those houses that are ready uh, are, 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 are as a result of the collaboration between the government of local unity and the provincial government. Uh, the city also has been, this Johannesburg has shamefully been a dirty city, especially the CBD. The government of local unity introduced what is called a program called Cleaner Joburg. Uh, Cleaner Joburg is a, a, a cleaning campaign. Uh, it was led by, capably by the two uh, uh, mayors. Uh, and uh, MMC then, MMC Merani. Uh, they've been going to different areas. We have in the CBD here every night, every night uh, in the CBD of Johannesburg as we speak, there are, there are workers who clean the city every night. Uh, although we know by the end of day, uh, there are poor parts of the city where even if the city is cleaned every night without exception under this program called Cleaner Jobek, there are areas where when you wake up the following morning by midday, it's still very dirty. And this is going to require mobilizing uh, residents uh, and people who are doing business, especially small businesses in the city, to work in partnership. So this question of cleaning our city, cleaning the communities uh, in the city of Johannesburg, this program called Cleaner Joburg is very, very important. It is working well. We're seeing the results in some of the areas uh, in, in the city. We are beginning to see the results of this program uh, called Cleaner Joburg. But the, the, this leadership must also continue to upscale programs uh, dealing with mainstreaming of youth and women. Uh, in the, the core program of the city and these are not new programs they are programs that were unveiled uh, in 2019 when the government of local unity uh, came into effect uh, and use all the agencies and departments of the city to ensure uh, that there is agency uh, on addressing these programs to mainstream youth and, and women uh, and and we want to emphasize the city of Johannesburg has played a key role in supporting the Township Economic Development Bill, which has now been tabled in the legislature by the Houghton Provincial Government. The Township Economic Development Bill is there to support small businesses in our cities and in our townships, but also to remove all the regulatory impediments, including the laws that punish. Uh, small businesses. May, you and I have seen uh, how the law enforcement authorities come uh, to punish small businesses. They will tell you that it is the laws, the bylaws. Uh, they often tell me that you must change the law. They are following the law. And that's what we are doing. We have introduced in, in the province for all, uh, uh, the whole province, all municipalities, uh, have signed up to that uh, bill, which is called the Township Economic Development Bill. But in Johannesburg, the, the city has been uh, repeatedly prioritizing support for SMMEs uh, 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 and those SMMEs across the city, including uh, businesses owned by youth and women and people with disability. Now, when the, the bill come into effect, uh, it was going to make it much easier for informal businesses uh, to be established and small businesses to be established and operate uh, in spaces where they receive support. Uh, one of the things the president announced in the ANC manifesto, uh, we are already implementing. That is the amending or repealing legislation that makes it difficult for small businesses to operate. Uh, but the city also, the leadership of the city is going to look at how to incentivize small businesses. Uh, and they've already been doing that. These programs can't wait in the next 30 days. How to incentivize small businesses. Uh, but also give them some, some of them, give them uh, 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 some, some, when people are establishing businesses, uh, give them a period within which they can have something called a raise holiday. Uh, this is part of our uh, overall approach in the Township Economic Development Bill to allow them for a certain period as they set up uh, uh, to get some holiday, but also when they establish their businesses in the townships, 
where we have the largest number of people living, young people unemployed. Those businesses that go and set up in the townships must be incentivized uh, as well. Uh, and, 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 and some of this we know, some issues have been arising after the unrest about if it's safe. And we are saying we are doing everything to deal with that. I would like to say the one last issue that the city needs to pay attention to, this leadership, and they've been dealing with these billing issues. All of you, anyone who lives in the city of Johannesburg, knows that billing is often a very big issue. People call me, uh, uh, residents call me, complaining that they've received a bill that cannot be explained. Uh, and the leadership of the city has been dealing with this matter. Uh, to expedite uh, the resolution of, 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 of putting in place a reliable uh, billing system that would not trouble residents uh, of the city. So this, this is not an issue that must wait uh, uh, for after the elections. So the government of local unity will continue to carry out uh, the priorities that have been agreed upon. And we are very grateful. I want to express that. As the ANC, we are very grateful to find partners, uh, coalition partners who share our sense of agency on fixing the city that was once a great city under the leadership of ANC mayors. This city was a city of which we were very proud under the leadership of ANC mayors. Uh, and this city... It is the commitment of the ANC that this city must return to being a city of which the residents will be very, very proud. A thriving city uh, that has got all the features of enormous opportunities for all the residents of the city. And the ANC is confident uh, that this can be done. As it pertains our election campaign, uh, from, a, from the point of view of a campaign, the ANC is running a campaign to get a full mandate from the people of municipalities, all municipalities in Gauteng. We want to get a full mandate. We will go to, into every house. We are going into every house to say to the people of the province in every municipality, the ANC is asking you to give it a full mandate to govern to address the issues uh, that, uh, that uh, 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 are, are troubling uh, people in our municipalities. That we do uh, because we can't plan for and rely on coalitions. Uh, uh, communities have experienced where coalitions are disastrous. They have experienced that. Uh, yes, in a sense, in our province, it is really only in a Kruleni where we have had a coalition uh, for the past five years that has had positive results for the residents of Akrulen. Uh, that coalition led by the ANC under Mayor Masina, uh, I go everywhere in Akrulen, I can feel the positive impact. Not that all the problems are resolved, but I can feel the positive impact of... But it's very difficult to run coalition governments. And, and we, we would like the people of our province to give the ANC a full mandate uh, in every municipality to solve the problems and address those problems. Uh, and yes, there are areas where there have been major shortcomings. Uh, and we, 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 as we go to each municipality, we, we go there to say to the people in this municipality, these have been the, the shortcomings and these are the things we did not do. What is it? Uh, we are doing to address uh, those issues. So the city of Johannesburg is, is, is a great city in our continent. Uh, it's the key economic player uh, in the Gauteng and in the national economy. So having leadership, strong leadership that pulls in the same direction is a priority uh, for the ANC in Gauteng. And it is also a priority for the provincial government. Because if the city of Johannesburg does not work and is pulling in, in, in that direction and in that direction, the province will be pulled down. And that's the experience I have uh, since uh, uh, 2016. But in the, last, in the last few, in a year or so since uh, the government of local unity has been here, we have been collaborating on major infrastructure projects, on major 
social programs uh, to address poverty in various communities, as well as on major economic programs to unlock the full potential of the economy of Johannesburg. And that's what we want this team that's going to be led by Mpomo Erani in the city of Johannesburg to do. Even in the last 30 days of the term of office of this administration, those issues must be attended to with a great sense of urgency. Thank you very much. So that is really our briefing. Uh, thank you so much, Kume Chair. I'm going to take hands if there are. And then we we'll move to the, next, the last part of our program today. You'll be number one. Okay. You'll be number two. You know the drill. Introduce yourself and the media. And then you pose your question. It will be noted. And you'll be responded to as we allow the treasurer to attend to matters, pressing matters of the organization. I know they're waiting for you. They've been waiting. Uh, number one. Okay. Well, my name is uh, Accurate Black from the same Um Since we are so close to um, the local government elections, in terms of ANC process, are you going to then uh, rerun the process of a mayoral candidate? Or are you going to go with uh, Mr. Morane as your mayor uh, in the next uh, election? If you are going to rerun, would you please give us uh, reasons behind it? Because um, most of the time, um, this uh, process of electing a mayoral candidate creates uh, some sort of a, a contestation. Um, so when you explain, would you uh, also allay fears for your members that um, some of your leaders will put side to side if you reopen that process? Thank you. Thank you very much, Abdul uh, Number two. Number two from PNCA. Um, the first one, maybe, uh, if we may be able to allow the region to explain some of the uh, conversations we have had with coalition parties that you are confident that tomorrow will go well, uh, because we know that we will get excited when it comes to coalition government. Uh, but secondly, then from uh, yourself, Kimia, in terms of the practicality of what can be achieved in just a short space of uh, less than a month, um, since this process of putting a mayor and then a mayoral committee is being fast checked really what can be achieved with such problems that we have in the city of Johannesburg mentioning the issues of electricity and so forth so just the practical of what really can be achieved in this short space of time uh, maybe just a word from the incoming mayor then <laughs> he definitely has <laughs> he definitely has something to share. In fact, that question can be answered by yeah. him. What can be achieved okay. in the next 30 days? And that the regional leadership will deal with the question on the coalition partner support. There's another question from... We've got a question from Pizzo, Kaya FM. He says, incorrect billing has been an issue for years. What different approach will the upcoming leadership do to address it? Thank you. Uh, those are the questions. Uh, maybe others will come after the committee former runners address the, the issues that the chair says he must address or uh, issues that the regional leaders will have attended to. But we don't intend to keep you here for too long. So, chair, you and your team. Uh, thank you very much. Let me just explain the ANC's uh, approach to in response to APUS uh, question. So the national organization, so the ANC is a national organization. It has a uniform approach to dealing with the issues of uh, local government, uh, including uh, the question of mayoral candidates. So the, the ANC will appoint for the term of office after the November 1st elections, the ANC will, through its own processes will appoint mayoral candidates who will then be put in councils that would have been new councils elected uh, to uh, in accordance with the ANC uh, 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 mandate to uh, ensure that uh, they become a mayor. So of course you 
that will depend on the type of electoral support the ANC will get. But our approach is that we will do the process, the, the appointment of mayors, uh, and let's call them mayoral candidates, because they can only be mayors when they've been elected by councils. We will do that uh, after the elections. What I want to assure the people of, of our province uh, is uh, just what the president has been uh, saying to the people of South Africa. We have a new approach to the selection of mayoral candidates. Uh, is it builds on what the region's uh, role will be, what the province's role will be, but the most important difference is that everybody has to be interviewed. Uh, and and it, this process was pioneered here in Gauteng. We, we, the first province, and Johannesburg is the first city where the ANC appointed a, a mayoral candidate uh, through the interviews. And it really, really affirms the correctness of that approach. Firstly, that uh, you can't just think that you were a, you, you yourself you think you will be a good mayor. Your region can't just think that you will be a good mayor, or even your province can't just think that you will be a good mayor. There must you must be subjected to a process of inter what do you know about local government and governance in general. And what do you know about the problems, specifically problems of people in that locality? Uh, and do you understand ANC policy, including understanding what has already been put in place, what has worked and what has not worked? And that's why I like the fact that uh, this question on billing from Pizzo, I want that question to be asked, un, uh, uh, asked to Mwerani. Uh, about what he knows about the billing problem in Johannesburg and what will be done in, this, in the next 30 days and what has been done so far. Uh, so I want to emphasize that, that that approach gives us the best assurance that the NC is going to deploy the best men and women in the, in the area of responsibility in, for being the leaders of our, our uh, uh, government. Uh, the executive in the municipality because that's what the mayor is the mayor is the leader of the executive in the municipality so the ANC uh, approach of the interviews uh, will do that I know people always ask the question but why does it not get done uh, before the elections I think that's a matter that the NEC has discussed quite a lot it gets uh, uh, discussed but we are satisfied that the safeguard uh, the safeguard and the guarantee we are giving to the people of South Africa is that we will have in every city uh, in Gauteng, we will have in every city uh, in the Republic a mayoral candidate from the ANC who has been interviewed uh, out of a number uh, of, uh, of people uh, where they, everything has been looked at. Uh, and this helps to correct uh, some and, and let me tell you, there's also not much time to, to always be starting afresh. Uh, we have had democracy since 1994. Local government, uh, the new local government uh, uh, system started in 1995 and was significantly uh, jacked up in 2000. So we have had local government for a long time. We can't be starting afresh uh, all the time. We will have a team from the ANC through a system of electing community uh, 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 ward-based uh, system, community and ward councillors. Through that system, we have also ensured that we, we have people trusted by our communities. And, and you, you, you see from time to time there are protests and complaints. And we have assured ANC members, wherever there's been a problem, if there's somebody who was elected popularly, supported by the community, and their name was removed. We said we are going to fix that. Because we, we want to guarantee communities that the people that you identified as the people who must represent you uh, through an ANC process will be the people who will represent you. If their names ended up being removed, uh, the ANC will correct that process. And we are in the process of doing that. And we do it even on the 2nd of November. Our president has been saying that. 
uh, uh, that will be done uh, uh, to do that. But we 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 will have uh, for the next term we will have uh, a new a different process for all the mayoral candidates throughout the country. We are dealing with completing this term now uh, uh, up here. We are very confident that even in the current lists, ANC lists, as we have in Johannesburg, we've got capable, very capable people on those lists. Uh, from, from, from those people, we will be able to, to have candidates that will be interviewed and the national officials of the ANC on behalf of the National Executive Committee uh, will make a decision on who will be our candidates uh, after the elections. And we are confident uh, that uh, those will be the men and women who fit the bill, uh, fit for purpose. Uh, we have that new process for the ANC to help us achieve that. Uh, I would like to hand over to the, the regional uh, leadership to deal with the coalition partners. The Secretary of the Region, uh, Dadam Rero, uh, is actually on behalf of the ANC, is the convener. Uh, on behalf of the ANC, they have given him the mandate to convene the coalition partners. He's not in government. He convenes the parties to ensure that the, those who are in government from the coalition uh, partners are in government. But he convenes the leaders in Johannesburg of this party so, so he can, uh, with authority, say uh, what, whether they will support us uh, tomorrow or not. And I would like to shift for him. Uh, to come and uh, deal with this. After, we, after, that, after that, we would like uh, the mayor, mayoral, our mayoral candidate to make a statement. Uh, and that statement would answer the question, what are you going to do in the next 30 days, uh, including fixing the issues of billing? And what can you achieve in, in 30 days? He will, he will deal with that. So I would like to move uh, over. No, fine. Oh, yeah. okay. Thank you. No, thanks, uh, uh, the comrade chair, and uh, to the participants. We did have a very successful meeting last night with members of the coalition partners, and here we're referring to the IFP, the African Independent Congress, uh, the Congress of the People. Al Jama and the United Democratic Movement. And in our engagements, they all endorsed the name of uh, Mpo Moirani, and they are ready to ensure that all their councillors are represented tomorrow. They're in council, and they will put their vote uh, uh, next to the name of Mpo Moirani. So that part has been sealed, and we have also re looked into our immediate priorities and what needs to be done and what what became key out of the meeting is our response on matters related to the supply of electricity uh, especially in the escom uh, supply area so that's the commitment that all of us had agreed yesterday that we need to ensure that uh, we focus on that so we had a very successful meeting thank you okay so we can uh, move